What you are seeing on screen right now is the first picture of a black hole. It is located 55 million light years away in the center of the elliptical galaxy Messier 87. It has a mass of about 5 billion solar mass. But what is this object anyway? What is a black hole? Black holes are by far the most bizarre objects we have found out there in space. They are able to have infinite densities and warp spacetime to the point they might be able to destroy it. Their insane gravitational pull is sufficient to keep an entire galactic mass together. To make sense of what a black hole actually is, we need to start at their beginning. Stellar physics. Stars burn by the hand of nuclear fusion of elements in their core to generate radiation pressure to sustain themselves against their own gravitational weight. For main sequence stars, hydrogen is being fused into helium. While gravity is trying to contract the star, the radiation pressure from the nuclear fusion in the core sustains it. This creates an equilibrium state, which can last for billions of years until the star exhausts its hydrogen fusion and needs to start fusing heavier elements to maintain its stability. When the hydrogen is exhausted, the star will begin to fuse helium into carbon, oxygen and neon. The different fusion process causes the star to swell and become a giant. It may expand to over 300 times its former diameter, significantly lowering the star's density. Depending on the star's mass, it can keep fusing heavier elements. Inevitably though, a limit is reached when the star's mass is no longer sufficient to maintain nuclear fusion. The elements get too heavy and a limit is reached. The fusion stops. When the fusion ends, the radiation pressure fails as well. Encountering the gravitational force of the star is no longer possible. A collapse becomes imminent. It is this dramatic moment in the star's life that is known as a supernova. It is not exactly known what the precise mechanism is that turns the imploding star into an exploding supernova. But for this video, we will only need to focus on the collapsing part. As the radiation pressure falls away, the star's outer layers are no longer supported by the stellar core. Gravity starts to contract the star and the outer layers will accelerate towards the star's core. The core is the most decisive element here. A stellar core supports itself via electron degeneracy pressure. Which simply put is the principle of electrons repelling each other due to their mutual negative charge. During the fusion stage, this is sufficient to sustain the core. But now the core has to counter the weight of an entire star collapsing on it. Now some really interesting things can happen depending on the star's weight. If the star's core is less than 1.4 times the mass of the sun, the core pressure is sufficient to stop the collapse. The outer layers bounce off and create a planetary nebula. What remains of the core becomes an enriched mass called a white dwarf. This is the fate that awaits the sun in around 7 billion years. But suppose the star is heavier, between 1.4 and 2.8 times the sun's mass. The electrons at this mass will not be able to stop the collapse. The outer layers literally crush the core. The immense pressure smashes the electrons into the protons, forcing neutrally charged neutrons to be formed. The core size shrinks from about the size of the Earth to a highly compressed and dense ball of neutronium only 20 kilometers wide on average. We call these objects neutron stars. Check out my video on them on my channel. The neutrons, just like electrons, repel each other, creating neutron degeneracy pressure. For the star to counter neutron degeneracy pressure, it needs to be above the tolman oppenheimer volkov limit of 2.8 solar mass. If this happens, the neutron degeneracy pressure is breached. The neutrons are ripped apart into their composite quarks, forming a few hundred meter wide ball of exotic matter called a quark star. But if the mass is even greater, it is enough that not even this can withstand the collapsing layers. It is this critical moment that will forge a black hole. If the quark degeneracy pressure fails, there is no force capable of stopping the collapse left. So what now? At this moment, the core of the star is doomed. To continue our journey, to understand a black hole, we need to understand escape velocity. In brief, escape velocity is the speed an object needs to escape a body's surface. For the Earth, this is about 11 kilometers per second. Get something to move at that speed and it will be able to escape the Earth's gravitational pull and escape into space. The more dense an object gets, the more gravitational pull it will exert. As the gravitational pull increases, so will the escape velocity. For the Sun, it is about 600 kilometers per second. And a neutron star has an escape velocity of 0.5 c, which is half the speed of light. 
Now going back to the collapsing star. As it is being crushed, its gravity gets stronger and stronger and its escape velocity gets higher and higher. If it shrinks below the quark limit, an amazing thing happens. The escape velocity surpasses the speed of light. In our universe, where nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, this means literally nothing will be able to escape the surface anymore, not even light itself. When not even light itself can escape the surface, the body turns black. It is this moment our black hole is born. The region around the core, where the escape velocity becomes greater than the speed of light, is called the event horizon. Past this point, no matter can escape the gravitational pull from the hole. It is noteworthy the gravitational pull weakens as the distance from the black hole increases. Whatever happens to the core after this point is completely unknown. It is theorized to collapse into a single point of mass called a singularity. But of course this is only theory. The kind of black hole which formation I just described is known as a stellar mass black hole. Those are only from 3 to a few dozen times the mass of the sun. As the black hole contains more mass, the event horizon expands outwards. Thus, the black hole gets bigger. The first large black hole was found in the center of our own galaxy. Dubbed Sagittarius A star, it contains an insane 4 million solar masses. We now believe every galaxy has a black hole at its heart and they may be crucial in the formation of galaxies themselves. It is in the center of a galaxy this picture was taken as well. Now the part we are all interested in. What were to happen if you fell into a black hole? Well, you die a horrifying death of course, but the physical process is very interesting. As I pointed out, the gravity weakens at a greater distance from the black hole. In proximity to a field as strong as a black hole's, a close the gravitational difference between your feet and head can be up to a million times. This causes your body to stretch in a process we humorously call spaghettification. This would happen pretty close to the black hole, at which time you would have accelerated to nearly the speed of light. But we have only tipped the insanity of black hole physics. Enter relativity. One of Einstein's most revolutionary ideas was that space isn't just empty. It is more like a field in which all matter and energy is embedded. What we perceive as gravity is really more a warping of this field. The way a bowling ball would curve a mattress if put in one. The more massive an object, the more it warps space. Not only that, but space and the concept of time are basically two parts of the same field, which we now call the space-time continuum. You can't affect one without also influencing the other. This gives birth to the concept of time dilation. Under influence of strong gravity, you perceive time more slowly than someone under less gravitational influence. I know this seems insanely bizarre, but we have proved this concept and time dilation exists. The effect is tiny but real. Someone further away from the Earth experiences time faster than someone at the surface. Russian cosmonaut Sergei Krigalev, who has spent over 800 days in orbit, has effectively time traveled 0.02 seconds into the future thanks to time dilation. Near a black hole, however, gravity and thus time dilation will be a lot stronger. In fact, they warp time so much that at the event horizon, time is effectively stopped. You'd perceive your clock going the same speed as you fall in, but someone observing your death dive into the black hole from afar, your clock would keep going slower. Apparent to them, you'd slow down in time, slowly freezing upon the black hole's surface. For outside perception, your fall would literally take forever. And as your emitted light struggles increasingly to get away from the gravitational pull of the black hole, it is losing energy. Due to this, the particles will redshift. For someone observing your fall, your body would continue to slow down and fade into a deep red color before eventually fading away into infrared. Just as an observer would see your clock stop, they would also see your light infinitely redshift losing all its energy as you cross the event horizon. This is crazy. You aren't actually slowing down your movement. You will continue to experience time normally on your approach. From your viewpoint, looking behind you, you would see the time of the universe speed up. The mere moment you cross the event horizon, you would see the entirety of the future of the universe flash out before your eyes. Virtually all of time would pass for you, all of it. The light falling into the hole with you would blue shift, becoming such high intensity you'd essentially be taking a gamma ray burst to the face. Black holes? can kill you in many creative ways. 
but even the black hole itself is hardly invulnerable. Black holes, over time, simply evaporate via Hawking radiation. How this works is quantum flux. I've previously done a video on quantum flux on my channel. Virtual particles pop in and out of existence on the quantum level everywhere. These particles borrow energy from the vacuum. As one matter particle starts existing, so will an antimatter counterpart. Combined, these cancel each other out and they return energy to the vacuum almost immediately. All happening within the time frame allowed by the uncertainty principle. If quantum flux happens on the edge of the event horizon, it is possible for one of these particles to fall into the black hole as the other one escapes. This way the energy isn't returned to the vacuum and matter slowly radiates away from the black hole. As the other particle falls into the black hole, annihilation is no longer possible, causing the black hole to lose energy and mass over time. This way, assuming the black hole doesn't consume more mass, it will slowly radiate away. This video has barely scratch the head of the complexity of the physics surrounding the topic of black holes. Black holes are terrifying, both as object in space and subject for me to explain. This video covers them a bit plain due to a lack of time. Details such as quasars, spinning black holes and accretion disks have all been excluded for this reason. Though the video still suffices as a short explanation to what black holes are. I hope to cover them in more detail or at least aspects of it in future videos. This has been GG Science and thank you for watching.